I'm out here today just northwest uh, of San Antonio in a little town called Leon Valley. And I'm uh, not only preacher digger, but I'm also the president of the Texas of Association of Metal Detective Clubs. We're an association here in Texas of 20 different clubs from all the way from South Texas to North Texas to East Texas to West Texas and all in between. And our purpose as a club is to unify all the Texas clubs and to preserve history one find at a time. And two years ago, I started a thing called the Give Back Project where we go in and we partner with his heritage societies and historical societies and different archaeological commissions and we go on to these these uh, historical homes here and we work together as a team to preserve Texas history and uh, this is our third project that we're doing together and today we're in Leon Valley just northwest of San Antonio at the Hebner Onion House and here's the placard right here you can kind of read it yourself this was a, an old 1858 it was a stagecoach stop a lot of history here this was back out when there was nothing out here at all and uh, we're out here to, together with the San Antonio Area Association, uh, the club, and also the Cuero Metal Detecting Club. And we're working alongside the archaeologists and teams, and we're going ahead and greeting off and, and digging up all these different artifacts. And we've already found some great artifacts already. And uh, we also have a dirt pile here, and we're trying to sift through all this dirt. And we've already found some great artifacts. Let me show you some of those artifacts that we found already. And they're up here on the table. I've got with me right here, Clint McKenzie. He is the head archeologist out here today with the Texas Southern Archeological Commission. And uh, he's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, the purpose of what we're doing and some of the artifacts that we have found. Hi there. Um, what we're doing is assisting the metal detectorists by uh, helping to document where the things are on the property and the depth that they're coming out at, as well as uh, helping to identify the items. Uh, some of the material that's in this case here, I'll go through. These are things that were uh, removed from the back dirt uh, that came inside the house, and it had, it's mostly material that dates from the 1860s through about 1920. And uh, you can use the GoPro to look at the items, and I'll kind of narrate what we're looking at here. Uh, these things came out from underneath the floor, and so uh, what we're finding are a lot of personal items that fell on the floor and either fell through a, a knot hole or through a crack in the floor uh, to the subfloor, including a nice collection of late 19th century marbles, uh, most of which are from Germany. There are some American marbles. We've got some Benningtons. We've got some uh, German quartzes and agates. We've got some German limestones, uh, a couple of German glass marbles. We've got some clay common marbles and a, and a china marble uh, with a, with a, in a helix pattern. We also have a number of pieces of doll fragments. This is from the same doll. This is a foot from another doll. Uh, and another toy, a little toy wheel from a cart or perhaps a cannon. Another thing that we found quite a lot of that you'd expect from things that fell on the floor and went through the cracks are buttons. We've got a lot of, most of, almost all these buttons are late 19th century. Uh, some could go into the 20th. We've got buttons made of bone various buttons made of both mother of pearl as well as abalone. We've got buttons made of porcelain, glass. These are other uh, fancy uh, mother of pearl buttons. We also have a uh, general service army button uh, that dates uh, after 1911. Uh, we also have some uh, bone items. Uh, we ha this is a, an amber pipe stem. Uh, we have a piece of ivory, uh, which is more than likely a, uh, a, a needle for uh, for uh, some sort of knitting or crocheting. We have a bone, a head, ha a head of a toothbrush, which would have had uh, horse bristles in it. And then this is an unusual artifact. It's a stingray spine. Uh, and, you know, the people were just like us. If I found that at the coast, I'd pick it up and bring it home. And it somehow ended up here at the Hebner house and ended up under the floor and ended up being found in our back dirt. Um, also, uh, we found quite a lot of kerosene lantern glass uh, the chimneys, uh, as you would kind of expect to see that. Uh, that was the major uh, source of lighting uh, in, from 1862 all the way up probably to the 1930s or 40s. We also have a lot of spectacle glass uh, that came out, uh, including some uh, sunglasses, a nice uh, green glass here. We also have a number of jewelry items. These are uh, stones that came out of ring settings. Uh, this is red glass. This is a piece of polished jet. We have a number of different beads, uh, turquoise, glass. Uh, this is also a, a, some sort of 
form of turquoise and a faceted glass bead. Perhaps one of the more interesting objects is this uh, solid gold thimble uh, that is hand chased. And this uh, thimble also has uh, the initials AH on it, so we know that it belonged to Anna Hebner, who was the daughter of the man who uh, built the property in 1862. Uh, we have a whole series of coins, uh, a number of uh, three Indian head cents uh, dating from 1897, 1903, and 1905, and then two relatively early Lincoln heads, a 1918 and a 1919 San Francisco. And we also have a 1950 Panama Pacific International Exhibition token that came out, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, we don't find whole bottles except in the cases of things that are very small. These are both uh, files that were used for uh, to hold medicines or pharmaceuticals. Uh, they both still have their corks in them. Uh, other items include an amazing array of 19th century munitions uh, ranging from a pistol ball to uh, various sizes of buckshot. Uh, we have a 44 Henry uh, and then a number of a small caliber. Uh, this is a relatively interesting cartridge. Uh, it's an 11 and a half millimeter Mauser. Uh, it's made by uh, H. Uh, Unterdorfer in Nuremberg, and it was made in 1875. Uh, it was a what they call a Schutzen round, uh, used for target shooting. But that that would have had quite the quite a mule kick to it. Uh, typical uh, uh, early uh, UMC uh, 3030 cartridge, and a series of different types of shotgun shells. We've got four tens. Uh, 16s, uh, 12s, and 20s represented here. Um, all the shotgun shells have uh, their head stamps show date ranges from the late 1860s uh, to as late as 1938, but they all cluster uh, in, a, in, a, in, in the range of about 1900 to about 1915, which is consistent with what we're also finding with the coins and everything else. It appears that most of the stuff that we're finding dates before 1920. Uh, when they must have put down a linoleum floor that prevented a lot of things from falling on the floor and going into the subfloor. We also have a, a series of ceramics. These here are um, are the earlier ceramics, uh, dating to some of these ceramics date to the 1850s and 60s. The house itself is 1862, but that doesn't mean that the ceramics aren't older and then got broken and left here. Uh, so this is called uh, this is a type called a banded slip or annular wear. Uh, we also have hand-painted underglaze. This is a type of spatterware, sponge decorated. All of these are, are, are 1850, 1860s. Uh, this is a piece of burnished ware, which they must have bought uh, at the market. It more than likely came out of Mexico. We have transfer ware that can date as early uh, as this material, if not earlier. But uh, as you go this way in the case, the things get later in time. This is what's called the calcomania. It's when they stopped uh, doing hand painting of China and actually just laid decals on and then uh, uh, slipped it. Uh, and it's under the glaze there. Uh, this, this is a piece of uh, Japanese porcelain. And this is another piece of decalcomania. And this is another piece of uh, what we call transferware. Uh, most of these are very late 19th and into the early 20th century. And then also of interest is the fact that this is just a small selection of uh, prehistoric material. The house was actually built on top of a prehistoric site. And in the process of going to the back door, we found hundreds of pieces of uh, chert and flint debitage uh, that indicates that the Native Americans were using this site as a campsite uh, repeatedly over thousands and thousands of years. So it's a pretty amazing site. We've got material that uh, uh, from the prehistoric period and then uh, from the historic period, uh, occupation of the house from 1862 uh, all the way up till about 1920. A really nice uh, selection of artifacts. Well, Clint, I appreciate you going over all that. Sure. It's amazing how it tells a story. Absolutely. And every little bit. And I appreciate uh, uh, the TAMDC and the Texas Southern Archaeological Commission and along with the Texas Historical Commission and as well as uh, Leon uh, Valley Historical Society, all partnered together to preserve our Texas heritage and our Texas history. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me introduce you. This is Terry Brown. He's the uh, president of uh, the uh, Claro Metal Detective Club. We appreciate you being out here today. And uh, he's got some of his team members out here. This is Brandon Pickett. And he's already found him a buckle. And we got a lot of good finds. Let's keep on looking around and see what we can find. Hey everybody, let me introduce you to Wesley Ingalls. He is the president of the San Antonio Area Metal Detecting Club. And he's really the man that had the vision here that kind of spearheaded all this to kind of get all of the uh, logistics together and invited the TAMDC to come out and be part of this uh, uh, operation. And I appreciate that very much. Um, tell us how you came about uh, this, uh, this project. 
Well, the uh, Historical Society uh, came and uh, called us up and asked us if we would be willing to come over and possibly go inside their uh, their house there and detect the floor because they had the boards up off the floor so they wanted to see if there was anything there that they could recover so that's how we got started and it just snowballed from there and then i i brought it to uh, the attention of tnbc and uh, and then uh, you you quick picked it up as a give back project which is which is one of the best projects i've ever been involved in well i appreciate the invite of us coming out and uh, be looking forward to the video and uh, other things coming up later on in the next month or so thank you very much wes you're welcome thank you this is Ruth Lyle. She is a part of the Leon Valley Historical Society, and this is the president of the Leon Valley uh, Society, and this is Mark Eisenhower. And of course, you've already met Wes over there. And this is the first time the TAMDC and the San Antonio Area Club and uh, the uh, Leon Valley Historical Society is getting together to do a project like this. They actually own the property here, the he Hebner uh, Onion House. And so, Ruth, let me ask you and Mark, um, what is the expectation that y'all have out of this project? What do you want to achieve here? Well, we're looking for historical artifacts to give us more history about the property and the people who lived here and what life was like. And so we're restoring the inside of the house. We're working on that at this time. And so before we put in a, a permanent floor, we wanted to see what was underneath the floor. So that's how we got involved with y'all to come metal detect. And then as we start finding things, now we're actually sifting the dirt and finding more items. That's so awesome. that's kind of how we all got together. And you're preserving the house, and that's kind of where we come in too with a give back project. We're actually uh, raffling off some gold coins and uh, to, uh, to raise money, and all the money we get at the end of the day, we're gonna present it to the uh, Historical Society to, whether it's a little bit or a whole lot, we don't know, but we're gonna give it to go toward the preservation of our Texas history. So I appreciate y'all letting us come down and be part of this, and hopefully we'll find some great stuff and raise some good money. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. much. As you can see, there's a lot of activity going on, yeah. and uh, great project. So let's go around and see what we can see, what everybody's finding, okay? It is cool. I'm just saying you because that's old. It is. Like, It'll be fun. Hey, I'll, I'll make up a, a word. You cool. You cool. That, that's